القرآن يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه on that day the brother will stay away from his own brother the brother will stay away from his own mother the father will stay away from, from his own son on that day all connections that exist in this life blood connection, money connection will be split there will be no connection left except one type of connection those who are connected because of Allah's sake Allah Azza wa in the Quran Al-Akhillahu yawma idhin ba'duhum li ba'din adu illa al-muttaqeen ya ibadi la khawfun alaykum al yawma wa la antum ta'zanun alladhina amanu bi ayatina wa kanu muslimin aw wa kanu yattaqun Allah say the close friends and those who used to love one another in this life on that day, the day of judgment, there will be enemies. Not only they will stay away from you, but they will not recognize you. You may say, oh, but hold on, we used to live 60 years together. Who are you? I don't know you. And then Allah says, that's the, that's the good news. Allah says, oh my slave, there will be no regret and no sorrow for you on that day. Who are those slaves? Who are Allah's slaves? Those who believe in our sign, believers and they were pious or righteous in this life so the only thing that will stay yawm al qiyamah is the connection of brotherhood in Allah those who stay brother for Allah's sake so as I said earlier there are so many virtues to mention but we will inshallah stop with these virtues now let's talk about what are the rights now I've, I've listened to those virtues I've listened to the command of Allah Allah told us to stay brothers. Allah told us to show love for one another. Okay, but what does this mean? What does this mean, me as a believer? Let's talk about these. From the rights of the believers to one another and from the duty of the believers to one another, first of all, is that whatever you see between the believers or yourselves, I'm talking about yourselves as well, if you see any problems that occur between them or between you and another believer, then try your best to be reconciled. Try your best to fix it. Allah Azza wa Jal, when He mentioned the command that إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٍ Indeed, believers are only brothers. He said just the, the phrase after, the sentence after Allah said فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Try to reconcile between yourselves. Try to reconcile between yourselves. The only reason why you have problems is not because of Allah. No, no. It's because of the dunya matters. The only reason why you guys split, why you guys had problems, had conflict, is not because of Allah. Because Allah Azza wa Jal Hasha would never command us to split, to cause problems, to cause fitna. Have you heard an ayah from the Quran where Allah says split, cause fitna? Have you heard that in the Quran? Never. Allah rather He calls for love, He calls for unity. Allah says in the Quran, Wala tanazau fatafshalu wa tadhabariyukum. Do not differ. Fatafshalu. Why? Because you will then fail, and you will your strength, riyukum, which means your strength will then go away. In the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla says on many occasions, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Wa atasimu bihabillah. Stay united in the robe of Allah. Wala tafarraku. And do not differ. Do not split. So if you see any problem that happened between two groups of people, two family, and they're both believers, know for sure this is nothing to do with religion. The reason why they split is only because of dunya matters. Because maybe his son hit his son, or because maybe his wife spoke about his wife, and so on and so forth. Yes, Islam says that whoever commit a sin, try to advise not to commit sin, but would never tell you to split. So the first thing as a right of a believer to another believer is try to reconcile, try to find ways so that they will stay united. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith as collected by Abu Dawood, 
Ala unabbi'ukum bi afdala min darajati as-siyam wa as-salati wa as-sadaqah? Qalu bala ya Rasulullah. Qala al-islah bayna an-nas. Qul ja asim sidu, don't you want me to inform you o sahaba about something that is better or that is higher in uh, level than fasting, than praying and than giving sadaqah? Here the scholar they say that fasting as in the optional fast and better than the optional salah and better than the optional sadaqah they all say ya rasulullah of course we want that they say then try to reconcile try to to reconcile between people try to um try to reconcile between people now that's the first duty and right of the believers to one another the second duty and right is ihtiram hurumat nas which means to respect the honor of the people generally wa ihtiram hurumat al mu'minin khususan and to respect the honor of the believers specifically what does that mean to honor the the uh, to respect the honor and to honor the the, the believers it means do not make fun of them al istira wa sukhriya do not mock them wa tanaqqus do not belittle them وَلَمْزُهُمْ بِالْأَلْقَابِ السَّيِّئَةِ Do not call them names that would basically belittle them. So all, our, all the things that I mentioned are just examples. But of course, min babi awla, mean even much more than that, even much worse than that, is to harm them, to hit them, to steal from them. If Islam told you, do not make fun of them. So what about harming them, steal from them? Is this lighter or is this worse than making fun of them. What do you think? It's worse. So here, the scholars have just mentioned the, minim, the minimal, I mean, sin, the small sins. But they are, they are seen as big sin. But they're mentioning just the, the small sin, I mean, in your eyes. You may think, you know what, I'm just making fun of them. You may, I mean, in your eyes might be something, you know, that has no value. That is, you know, probably has no value at all. That is insignificant, but no. To Allah Azza wa Jal, you make fun of them, you call them them, you belittle them, that is a big sin. Why it is a big sin? Because Allah mentioned the Quran. Ya ladina amanu, or you have believed. Believers. This ayah comes just after the ayah of Innam al mu'minuna ikhwa. Believers are only brothers. And then Allah says, Fa aslihu bayna akhawaykum. And try to reconcile. And then just after that, Allah said, Oh, you have believed. Let not a group of people um, make fun of another group of people. Maybe that other group are better than them. Maybe the one that you used to make fun of, or you make fun of, they are better than yourself. And let not a group of women make fun of another group of women. Maybe the latter, maybe the one that the women make fun of, maybe they are better than the one who make fun of. <coughs> And then Allah said, Wala tell me zu and fusakum. Which means, and do not call names to each other. Alam, do not call names to each other. Wala tana bazu bil alqab. Do not call bad names to each other. Bi salismul fusuku bad al iman. Allah called this action, which is making fun, calling names, fusuq. Fusuq means evil deed, means disobedience. Allah said, What an evil and wretched. Disobedience after obedience. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ And whoever does not repent from those sins فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Then they are the wrongdoers. They are the oppressors. May Allah uh, forgive us and may Allah Azza wa Jal make us not from the wrongdoers. So if we mention about the small thing that it might be insignificant which is making fun of them, calling them names what about harming them and stealing from them or hitting them and so on and so forth. The third thing. تَجَنُّبْ سُوءَ الظَّنِّ وَالتَّجَسُّسْ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ Which means to stay away from having evil thought, from having conjecture. Conjecture means to think bad of a Muslim brother. To have like, think, oh, maybe he's doing this to me. You know, this evil thought. Like you're, you're in doubt, you think, you know what, what are they doing? Well, maybe they're, they're trying to you know, gather against me, maybe they're trying to do something against me. This is called 
so abundant. Allah Azza wa Jalla say in the ayah after, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, shtaribu kathiran min al-dhan. Oh, you have believed. Stay away from a lot of evil thought. Inna ba'd al-dhan. Indeed, some of them are sinful. If you think of your Muslim brother, that, okay, is a bad person, because you thought that, or you heard rumors, or hearsay that he said something about you, Having that thought, just the thought, a bun is a thought, you, without even you spell it, without even you saying it out. Just having that thought is a sin. Just thinking about your Muslim brother that he's a bad person because he said something about me, having this thought is a sin. Inna ba'wa dhanni ithni. Indeed, some of those evil thought and conjecture or assumptions are ithni. From them is to eavesdrop to spy on your Muslim brother because you think, oh you know what, let me let me find out, maybe he's doing a bad thing maybe he's doing this you know, eavesdropping is haram in Islam Allah mentioned the Quran وَلَا تَجَسَّسُ and do not eavesdrop each other do not spy on each other you think, you know what, maybe let me find out if he's going to the pub or if he's going out with the, or having a date with a girlfriend don't follow him and this is haram this is haram. The next thing which is do you not practice ghiba in the same ayah. Ghiba which is backbiting. What is backbiting? You may think backbiting is to say something bad about your Muslim brothers. Yes, it is. But it is not only that. Backbiting, it is. Anything that you say something about your Muslim brother that he feels shouldn't be said. He felt that, why did you uh, make it public? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was asked, when Aisha radiallahu anha, she, she kind of said to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi after he met some of his wives, some of his wives left the room. And Aisha radiallahu anha made just one little gesture, she did like this, as in, oh, you, one of your wives is very short. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, you have committed, just like this, without even saying, just like this. Say, Ya Umm al Mu'minin, Ya Aisha, you have committed riba, you have committed backbiting. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Backbiting. I thought, if I say a lie about him, if I say something bad about him, it's backbiting. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, No, if you lie and say something bad about him, that's slander, buhtan, faqad bahadki. Walakin al riba ta dhikru ka akha ka ma yakra. It means to mention something in which your brother doesn't want you to mention anything. Whether it's something to do with your creation, like short, or he can't speak properly, or whether something to do with the religious, religion, sorry. Like you may feel like, oh, this brother is committing a lot of sin. And then you spread the rumor, you spread, you know, oh, I saw this brother, he went to the pub, he, you know, held on to your alcohol, he drank alcohol. What he just did is riba. Yes, he's committed a sin. Why don't you go to him in the first place and advise him instead of spreading the rumor? So my dear brothers and sisters, those are the rights of the believer to another believer. As I said earlier, yes, the one who commits a sin, they're doing a big sin, but it doesn't allow you to spread the sins and spread the news to the Muslim brother because this is his haq. This is his right upon you. This is your duty toward him that you should uh, keep and conceal his sins. As long as this sin is something personal, it's not, I mean, affecting the Ummah, then you're not allowed to, to basically display those sins and divulge and say it out loud or put it on internet, on Twitter, or social media, or so, so and so. My dear brothers and sisters, Wallahi, Rubba Kalimatin, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Rubba Kalimatin, يَتَلَفَّضُهَا بِهَا الْمُؤْمِنِ لَا يُلْقِي بِهَا بَالًا يَهْوِيهِ أَوْ تَهْوِيهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ مُدَّتْ سَبْعِينَ خَلِيفًا Many a word that a believer uttered without he realizes the danger of that word that word will push him as deep as 70 years in hellfire One word, one word Kalima, Kalima means one word You may say the truth, you may say okay but it's, it's true You know he's alcoholic Maybe that brother doesn't want you to spread the news. So my dear brothers and sisters, you've got to be very careful about that. 
from the rise of the believers to one another is to help one another. To help one another. Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Quran, wa ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu ala al-ikm wa al-udwan. Help one another to al-birr righteousness and taqwa and piety, and do not help one another in uh, sin and in um, in sin and evil deed. Allah, fear Allah. Indeed, Allah has severe, or Allah is the one who owns the severe punishment. And the ways to help one another are so many. We could help him financially, but nowadays, unfortunately, when we hear the word help, we think it's just financial. It's just restricted to financial. No, it could be even mental support. Even if you go to him, you know, you comfort him with your kind words. That is very soothing, you know, for the heart of the believers. I mean, I've met some of the, you know, like Syrian and everything. When I spoke to them, I said, unfortunately, wallahi, I, I don't have, if I had enough money, if I, I was rich, I would, have, I would have done this, this to you. You know what he said to me? He said, I don't want this. All we want is just company. All we want is just some be believers to acknowledge that we are going through a hard time. All we want is that you do not forget us in, our dua, in your dua. That's all they want. They are very resilient people. What I'm trying to say is that you may think that helping is just financial. No, helping could be in so many ways and forms. It could be with your word. It could be if you see a sick person, we'll, we'll come to it later, that you go and visit him. <coughs> so many ways to help them. And the minimum, the least you could do is to remember them in your du'a. Remember them in your du'a. To ask Allah Azza wa Jal to we, uh, to uh, relieve all the stress and the hardship that the Muslim uh, around the world go through. May Allah Azza wa Jal yassir umurahum wa yanzah anhum usrahum ya Rabbil Alameen. From the right of the believer to one, one another, and that's very important, that unfortunately nowadays we do not do it. It's at-tanasuh. Wal-amr bin ma'aruf wa naha al which is to advise one another and to enjoy good and to forbid evil. Unfortunately, we lack this in our Muslim ummah. That is why, unfortunately, Islam is not spreading as it used to spread before. What did Allah say in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran? Kuntum khayra ummah ukhrijat nas. You are the best of the nation that was produced to people. Why? Why? The first quality, the first a uh, characteristic that Allah mentioned, ta'muruna bil ma'ruf. Because you were enjoining good. The Sahaba did not restrict in Medina, stayed all their life in Medina. They left Medina after the death of Prophet Muhammad. Rather, during his life, when the Prophet Sallallahu they would meet some people, some coming from different tribes and areas. The Prophet Sallallahu would tell them, now you have learned most of the religion, go back to your people. And they were happy. They had a mission. They want others to enter to Islam. Why? Because what's the purpose of Islam? What's the purpose of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu To save many people. What's the purpose of the mission of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu What's the purpose? What do you think? Yes, he was calling people to Tawheed, but why? Why do you think he was calling people to Tawheed? He was calling people to worship Allah. What was the Prophet Sallallahu What was his purpose, his intention? Come on, kids. Come on, you, uh, you. To save people from hellfire, to save people, to save as many people as possible from hellfire. That was his purpose. Again, his own life, his own, you know, money. I'm sure you've heard the story of that neighbor who was a Jew, and he used to do some, you know, he used to harm the Prophet Sallallahu by putting some of the beans you know, in the front door and so on and so on. Oh, the Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, just let us deal with it. So he is my neighbor. And Jibreel, he used, or Jibreel, he keeps reminding me about my neighbor to the point that I would thought, maybe I would thought that one day Jibreel would come to me and say, your neighbor has a right of inheritance. You see how much Jibreel would tell the Prophet ask them every day, be careful, be well with your neighbor. Be good to your neighbor, be careful. He was a Jew. Until one day, two days, he saw no being in the front door. What's going on? He asked around and he heard that his son was very sick. What did he say? Did he say, oh, Alhamdulillah, he deserves it? Did he say that? 
Look at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He went to him. He can I have a quick word with your son? And the neighbor knew because the Jews at the time of Rasulullah, they knew the truth. They knew that Rasulullah was indeed the messenger of Allah, sent by Allah. They knew that. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, Walad, oh, son, oh, my son, say these words, La ilaha illallah, I will be your lawyer, I will defend you on the day of judgment. And the boy looked at the father, and then the father, like, acknowledged or admitted and, you know, like, nodded, I said, Yes, say. It. And he said those words, and those were the last words, and he passed away. The Prophet Sallallahu came out of the house in tears, said, Alhamdulillah, that Allah saved someone from hellfire today. That was the intention of the Prophet Muhammad. It should be the same, my dear brothers and sisters. If you are commanded to enjoin good and to forbid evil to the non-Muslims, we are commanded to do so. We are commanded to call them to Islam. What about your Muslim brothers and sisters? Cool. Muslim doesn't mean angel. Many people think Muslim means angel. We don't commit sins. We commit sins. We are human. We're not angel. We commit sins. So if you see your Muslim brother, who commits sin in a nice way, of course. Go and advise him. Say, oh my dear brother and sister, oh my sister, oh my son, oh my uncle, come to the masjid. Do you not advise him in front of, as you know, you should, you know, advising someone need like good character and patience because he might, he might react different, everyone might react different. So if he reacts in a bad way and say, no, just stay away from me, then maybe the second day, go back. I say, oh, my dear brother, you know, do this, do that, come to the message. But mind them. This is, unfortunately, something that we lack nowadays. Especially in the West. Wallahu al-musta'an. Of course, from the... From the duties and the right of a Muslim, of a believer, upon another believer, is to love him. Like any, to love him, to love that anything good happened to him, like you love anything good happened to you. And to, to hope that nothing bad happened to him, like you hope for yourself that nothing bad happened to you. And this is something that unfortunately we like as well. We need to have that in our heart. You need to mean it. From your heart, you need to say, Oh Allah, I hope so and so. Nothing happened back to him. Not because, you know, you go to the same college or go to the same school or even someone you don't know. If you see he's a Muslim, Oh Allah, I hope. You need to hope this for every Muslim in the world. Oh Allah, you need to mean it. And unfortunately, this is something that we do not practice. And the least you could do, as I said earlier, is to make dua. To acknowledge and say, Oh Allah, relieve all the stress and hardship that every Muslim in the world goes through. And there is some hadith, some scholars they say that the hadith is weak, some of them say no, it's Hassan, which means accepting uh, or narration. And it is narrated by Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas. He said that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, on three occasions, when Sa'ab ibn Abi Waqqas, one of the ten uh, one of the ten whose Jannah was uh, announced and whose Prophet Muhammad وسلم, promised them Jannah, whose Jannah was promised to them. On three occasions, every time he entered, Prophet وسلم, would say, Dakhala wahid min ahl Jannah, which means one of the people of Jannah has entered the message. And second occasion, third occasion. And then this Sahabi said, I want to go and find out what he's doing. I want to go and find out what he's doing. He stayed three nights with him. And he said, he found out that he didn't do anything more than what he did. That what that companion did. He's not doing nothing more. Not doing something extra or... And he asked him, but what are you doing? You don't, you, don't, you don't do something more than I do. You don't commit sin. You don't, but you don't do a lot of optional deeds. What it is something that you do... So I know that there's something that I make dua every night before I sleep. I say, oh Allah... Oh Allah, make all the hasad and all that hatred that is present in my heart toward any Muslim, make it go away. I don't want to hate any Muslim. No matter what, it may be they harm me, I don't want to keep that grudge and hatred in my heart. And then the Sahabi said that this is what 
different. This is what this is something that the Prophet Sallallahu said that you are from the people of Jannah. Meaning, this is something that you have and I don't have. So, my dear brothers and sisters, remember to love your Muslim brothers and sisters, whether whether well, whether they are your neighbours or whether they are in the same country or whether they are around the world. <clears throat> now, from the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned and he said that it is part of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the duties and the right of a believer to another believer is the six things that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in a hadith. In a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, حَقُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ سِكْ The right of a believer toward another believer Six. Here, the scholars like Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he said that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he mentioned six, it did not restrict to six, but it is a way the Prophet Sallallahu he would sometimes teach the Sahaba. We call it in Arabic, he would, yani yuqayyid, mean he would number. Sometimes he would say, if there are three things that you do, you go to Jannah. But it doesn't mean that there are only three things that you do that make you go to Jannah. There are many other things. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would say with the number, say, if those six things are done, you go to Jannah. If the three things are done, you go to Jannah. The reason why he says that is to emphasize and to get the message across, to make it easy. <coughs> Ibn Rajab, he said in his book, he said that there are over, or Dhabi, Dhabi, rahimahullah, there are over 70 rights of a believer to another believer. Now imagine, I tell you, my brothers, you need to learn 70 rights now in one uh, gathering. 70 rights. Would you, do you think that you would remember those 70 rights? But if I tell you five rights, I'm teaching you five rights that you need to do. Five rights of a believer to another believer. Five, that's acceptable. You could, you could learn them. So the Prophet asked them sometime, and some occasion it would say three there, five there two there, one there. But the scholars, when they collected all the ahadith, they have alhamdulillah numbered and they have said that there are over 70 rights. But the sixth right that the Prophet sallallahu mentioned here is حَقُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ سِبْ إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ When you meet him, give him salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's the right of your Muslim brother upon you, meaning it is obligatory upon you Especially, especially when he gives you salam, it is obligatory upon you to give him back salam, to respond his salam. So give him salam. Salamu alaikum is not just a greeting. No, you're asking Allah to spread his salam to you. What does the word salam? A salam, first of all, what is a salam? And who is qualified of that word, of that great word, a salam? Who is qualified of it? Yeah, mean peace. But who is peace? What is uh, who is as salam? Allah is as salam. What is salam? He said peace, but be precise. What we understand by peace meaning no problems. But it's more than that. What is salam? What do you think? He said peace. Peace from what? Huh? From? From Allah, but from what? Or against what? Again, yeah, from each other. Against what? The word salam, salima, means to be safe. Safe from any evil and any harm that may come to you. So when you say, Assalamu alaikum, you are ask, actually asking Allah. This is not just a greeting. You are asking Allah, Oh Allah, give him your safety. And give him your rahmah and give him your barakah. It's dua. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, when you when you utter something, try to mean it. Try to understand it. You're asking Allah all these dua. And who do you think? When you make a dua to a Muslim brother, who do you think will make dua back to you? Huh? The Muslim, and more importantly, because the Muslim might be sinful, might be... Malaika. Malaika. Have you ever heard Malaika to be sinful people, sinful creation? 
Malaika, they say, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. They're making dua for you. The most perfect creation are making dua for you. Sinless people, they're making dua for you. So if you mean it, the malaika will answer back to you and ask Allah to give you and us safety and rahmah and a baraka, which is blessing. One of them is, وَإِذَا دَعَاكَ فَأَجِبَ if he call you here, we're talking about calling, if he invites you, is to invite you a wedding. If he invites you for a wedding, then you have, it's a duty for you to respond to this wedding. So, because, let's say he invites you for the wedding, he makes all this effort to invite the people, and then he realizes that you haven't turned up. What do you think will happen to him? He will get a bit upset. And the, the least thing he will think is, oh, what have I done to him? Why has he not come? So this will cause shaitan to you know, run in his blood. You know the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was in Medina, who was doing ihtikaf. And one night, one of his wives, Safiya, came to meet him in the masjid. And then he was walking her back to one of his uh, rooms, because as you know, the wife of the Prophet, they used to uh, live adjacent or close to the masjid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu on one of the borders. So he used to walk her to the room. This is how the Prophet was was to, toward his wife. He was very elegant, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then two men saw him with a woman. And of course she was, you know, wearing, she was covering herself. They didn't know who he was. So he rushed out. The Prophet said, Ala ris likuma innaha ummukum al mu'mineen safiyya. Just, just slow down. She's your mother. She's your mother of the believers. She's safiyya. The two men said, Subhanallah, Ya Rasulullah, Subhanallah. How can you think of us like this? We know, I mean, you don't have to justify. As they're trying to say, you don't have to justify, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet says, I'm take this famous word. Say, Inna shaytan la yajri min ibn Adam majraddam. Shaytan run into the ibn Adam like the vein run to yourself. Meaning, you know, the vein, the, the blood. How often does he run? Run all the time, meaning that shaitan run easy into your body and could easily give you whispers. The point is that if you don't answer his invitation, he might have a lot of thought and say, but why has he not come? Maybe, maybe this, maybe that. So you need to respect this. The third thing is, If he asks you for advice, you need to advise sincerely. Sincerely, sorry. You need to advise him sincerely. And this is something that we mentioned earlier. You need to advise your Muslim brother. Especially if he asks you for an advice. You need to advise him with the best of your ability. And when he becomes ill, then visit him. And I said earlier, subhanallah, maybe rubba kalima, maybe a word. You say to him, you make dua to him, in front of him, that will soothe him. That will basically appease his heart and subhanallah yeah, and, uh, we've, we've experienced that I mean when I was sick or when some people are sick when they get visitors they're happy they feel happy they feel because they feel subhanallah people are remembering me people are, uh, are loving me so it's important to have this spiritual uh, I mean a connection with the brothers and Muslims brothers, sisters around the world and uh, especially in your neighborhood and finally وَإِمَّاكَ فَاتَّبِعْ جَنَازَتَهُ now, if he passes away, follow him in his janazah. Now, look at the, like, like I said earlier, this love and connection is not restricted in this life. Even after your death, my dear brother, my dear sisters, you will know that there will be Muslim that you used to know in this life, they will follow you after death. They will make dua for you. Look at the blessing of Islam. Look at the blessing of this uhuwa, of this brotherhood, for the sake of Allah, that Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon this ummah. Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon this ummah the ni'mah of an imam. And Allah said in the Quran, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah said in the Quran, and I will conclude with that, Allah said in the Quran, remember my blessing. His blessing upon you when you were once, once enemies and he made you brothers. He made you as 
brothers and united. So this is a blessing, uh, one of the greatest of blessings that Allah bestowed upon this ummah and this ummah alone. This ummah, the brotherhood, and the rabbit al-iman, the, uh, the, 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 the bond that we all have to one another because of the faith, because of iman billah azza wa jal, has made us united. And if you are united, we are strong. We are like one body. The Prophet says, Al mu'minu lil mu'mini kal jas fi ta'atufihim wa tarahumihim wa mahabbatihim kal jasadil wahid. The example of the believers in their love with one another and in their affection for one another and in their rahmah for one another is like one body. What happened to that body? إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى سائر الجسد بالحمى بالسهر والحمى. If one part of the body feels pain, what happens to the rest of the body? You relax. Let's say if you have pain in your foot, you feel relaxed the rest for the rest of your body. No, you feel pain. You feel like. So likewise, we should behave. When you see your Muslim brothers that need help, or your Muslim brother that is lost. Your Muslim brother that is lost as in, you know, misguided, you should feel that pain. When you see a Muslim brother that is in pain, you should feel that pain. And you should mean it in your heart, say, Oh Allah, make me that I'm the one who will relieve and ease his pain with the best of your ability. And if you can't do so because he's far away or because you can't help, then the minimum, the least you could do is to ask Allah. And all your du'as will not go uh, uh, to waste. All of your du'as that you do it, ala al meaning uh, of the absent, all your du'as that you make, uh,